Today we are over in the old milking parlour, which hasn't really featured on the channel before, but here it is. For the last 12 months or more, it has been full of a load of furniture. There is another room in there, which is where all the milking happened. That's still got a load of our belongings in. But we've got some intentions for this room and we need to get it sorted ASAP. More about that later on in the video. For now, let me show you what we got up to yesterday because it looked a little bit different. So we're back in the parlour. If some of you remember, we had this rewired. Um, so you can see the cabling we want to keep. But the aim for this room is to get it cleared and signed off by food hygiene so we can store all of our frozen food in here. And we have to have a signed off place to do it. So clean it all up, maybe put some panels on or maybe paint it, we haven't decided yet. So there you have it, that's where we are so far. We've made a good start. All of the big boxes and that on the wall have gone. Uh, there are two live double sockets that are new wiring. The rest of it is still gonna come out. A lot of it's in conduit, and that conduit is holding up things we need to keep. So we've got to unpick a little bit now. Be careful what we touch and what we don't touch. So we can get all of this cut out. Starting out yesterday trying to do it really carefully and unscrew everything, but these are pretty modern bricks, nice and hard, and the plugs are not very good, so we're just gonna yank everything out. Actually, most of the baker light and plastic is giving way before the screws do anyway. So every part of me wants to do this properly. Well, not properly, but first time round and get the whole lot blast clean because I think it would be kind of nice to just get all these layers off. You should be able to do a good amount of this with just scraping, got like a floor scraper blade, you know, all of this lower wall. The walls, whatever this coat of paint is, is sound. It's just that white emulsion, which needs to be blasted off somehow. Option two is to uh, clean it all up as good as it needs to be and then either batten the wall off, even though it's a bit lumpy and bumpy, batten the wall off all the way around and use some hygiene panels, you know, your typical white, wipeable plastic panels that you see in kitchens. That means that the lower 1200 of the whole room will be wipeable panels and then above that, 
I'll clean this all back as much as it needs to so there's nothing loose. Then that, I will probably just do in a white eggshell, maybe a gray. And then I'll just spray paint the whole ceiling just with a white eggshell gloss, something that's bright, clean and wipeable. And then one day, one day, we'll deal with all that, get it all taken down. And you never know, there might be some rafters, something nice under there. In this end, it's a bit of a weird configuration. It's, it's kind of a timber frame with brick infill, but that's not a true truss. And I don't know what's above this sheeting. So I'm not 100% sure we've got anything too authentic up there. I mean, it was built, this is probably how it was built, but nothing too grand. Um, just softwood, I think, all these. And most of the beams, rather than being chunky beams, they are a pair sisted together. Well, I've got you here, because among some of you, I'm sure there are some uh, timber frame sort of heritage type people. This construction of the building is quite unusual. Um, we have, ignore the pig arc, we've got a an ancient stone barn over there which one day we'll talk about a bit more. Then we've got a nice timber frame building over there. I say building, it's just a lean-to log store, carport thing where the calves used to be reared. Uh, so there's some really old timbers in there, all of which have been repurposed from another building because they've got a lot of mortises in the wrong place. And then through into this building, which has got the nicest roof of the lot, you can see that we've got a proper trust roof uh, all nice big elm timbers all the way through. One day this will be an amazing building to restore. And all of the original purlins, rafters, you get the idea. So we go from 500 years old, probably older, maybe a little bit younger than that, through to this one, which is probably 18th century. And then over here, which is the parlor, and I I think it was built probably in the last 120 years or so. So not quite as grand. And what we've got there for is kind of some stable stone bases down there. Then we've got chunky posts and then almost like a T on top. Not, not sure that's pegged or mortise and tenon at all. You've got a T there. On top of that, you've got a beam, which acts as a wall plate but like i said it's two pieces of softwood sisted together uh, which is what those roof timbers come down onto so and, and these are all chamfered these these posts so they are substantial posts between there and there you've got brick infill with a bit of a raised footing here which might just be render um, but anyway, it's brick above. These are quite modern bricks. Um, well, modern in comparison to the rest of the farm. Uh, and then moving along here, another post. Bottom of the posts, again, these are softwood posts. Bottom of the post is pretty much rotted out. Not all the way through, but needs something spliced in. Fairly sound, um, but again, Another bit of weird T-shaped thing going on there. I think that's a scarf join maybe. And then oodles and oodles and bird's nest. Need to get on and do that soffit. Uh, another T-section there. And brick infill. So I don't think these bricks are supporting anything. I think the gable end brickwork is. But it's just a bit of an interesting, here you go, here's the end. So you've got the main beam that runs the length of the building is made up of two. That's the T section for this post, which is supporting it. And then you've got the, probably not original those rafters, but rafters above. It was re-roofed in the last 10, 20 years, but no pointing in there. So we need to check what those are like and probably redo that at some point. And what's interesting about it is it's almost, oh, this is a nice green roof, by the way. Uh, really, really state-of-the-art sedum roof. But what it is interesting is it's 
almost a replica of this much older cow shed. This one is a post with pegged joints up here. Um, a bits and bobs of this are older. I think some of these bricks are not as old. Um, and again, these are sat on kind of a brick saddle stone with a bit of stonework. Obviously quite weathered. And one would imagine that this was a door or a failed bit of brickwork. And there is a, a real love in these parts for cast concrete. <laughs> but anyway, it's done the job and held up okay. But obviously we need to take that out and rebuild this. Uh, I think this is where the tank was, this slab up here. Uh, and then over here, I mean, this has turned into a history lesson now, but over here, this wall here is uh, back to four or 500 year old stonework. And those stones traveled some distance and they are not light. If you look at the size of them, I mean, they're just completely bizarre. But we've got all sorts going on as far as uh, heritage research. So we'll be able to share more at some point. Right, back to the task at hand. Don't worry, this video is not over. Uh, you might be wishing it is, but we're gonna get on, tidy this down, and hopefully have a nice blank canvas by the end of the video. Bring on tomorrow. Right, we're now at the point where we can have a go with the pressure washer. It's still this little thing I bought from Tesco's 12 years ago. I will get a proper one at some point, but hopefully that will be enough to just blast off anything loose. It's a bit of an awkward time to have someone show up for a site visit. National Grid needs to dig to supply next door. Anyway, what a mission. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the second, third and fourth coat of paint didn't adhere particularly well. Whatever this one is, this first one to go on, is the sound one in the majority of places. So anything that's loose, a loose edge, I'll chip back. Um, but happy with that one. It looks way worse than it is. It looks like we've gone a step backwards, I know. But if we can get it all back to the sound stuff, even if it looks terrible, um, what I'm now thinking is we paint just a couple of coats of simple, smooth masonry paint over all the brickwork. I'll probably sand back the beams, make a bit of a feature of them. And then I might even see if I can clean back this lower, rendered section even more and get away with painting that because if we can paint that I mean it saves two four probably eight sheets and I think they're like 50 quid a sheet and we're already losing enough money with the, the farm produce so overheads uh, are not good it might just work that means we're just patching that section and as long as it's the, the key is we've got nothing loose or flaky. I've also washed down the whole ceiling and apart from loose bits flying off, that again can get painted. It's so, so warm and dry this week. I'm not worried at all about driving moisture into brickwork and all the sort of stuff that I would be if it's a really old stone wall or an old brick wall. This is, you know, modern-ish brick cement pointing. It's not an ancient building. Uh, and that timber will dry out really quickly. So I'm gonna get the worst of it off with the blast 
uh, with the pressure washer uh, before we start sanding and all that tedious stuff. Right, so far uh, we've got everything back to relatively non-flaky, but whether it's gone more flaky overnight, we'll have to wait and see. I've gone ahead and ordered smooth masonry paint, because I think that's what most of this is. So we'll be painting all the brickwork in that. I've got a wipeable sort of hygienic eggshell paint to do the lower section, and we'll use the same uh, eggshell on the roof, on the ceiling. There is another option which would make it even quicker. I could tear off that whole back section of render and we have painted brick to the floor. Hear me out, I think all of this section down here is blown anyway. There's a bit of movement. So rather than getting that rendered in and feathered out and waiting for it to dry, we could just chip off everything from that corner to that corner, clean down the wall really nicely and then paint it. And then that way, I think it will be clean enough. We'll leave the rendered section over there. We'll scrape all that, sand it, paint it. Same over here, especially if we're gonna have a sink. But this end wall below the window, I'm thinking feature wall. I'll do it as a time lapse because I think it will look easier than it's really gonna be. But let's just hope this flies off. I'll go with manpower and just use that big floor scraper rather than getting the SPS out. Apologies about the work there. That wall deserved that. All the lime mortars preserved behind there. The, the restoration couple in me is coming out now. I feel like we really should be breaking off all this cement around there, getting it back to a nice breathable building. But that wasn't the plan. If I go ahead and paint all this, then at some point it's all gonna have to be stripped or blast cleaned off, which is fine. And I think because we're gonna have a doff or, or a blast system in here at some point. If we just put a normal water-based masonry paint on there, it would probably be okay. At least the render wasn't that good. I mean, it held up all right for 50 years or something, but at least it came off clean. It, sometimes you see people rake out all the joints and then render. That's a nightmare to get hold of, or to get rid of. So the question is whether we carry them around I think, I think this will be all right once it's painted. I think it'll be quite nice. That's an internal wall. We're gonna have to have sink somewhere. So if we put freezers and counters on the sides and sinks, and then that end wall will just be a display wall maybe.